There are three general safety tests that we have uh, as well. So there's the hand tool safety test, portable power tools, and then the introduction to shop safety. So let's go ahead and go through uh, the, some of those questions so you'll be prepared for those tests as well. <clears throat> First of all, tools or equipment should not be used unless you have been shown how to use them correctly, okay? So unless I give you a little lesson, a little tutorial, and you know, whole group instruction or small group or individual instruction, don't go and pick up a tool that you don't know how to use. You're always gonna need to have, in, in this shop and in here, you need to have closed-toed shoes. Wearing slides, slippers, anything like that uh, is not gonna be uh, you know, allowed. It's just not a safe thing to do. You need to wear your closed-toed shoes. So um, don't give me any grief about this, you guys who go to athletics. Uh, you gotta change shoes for athletics, right? You can't wear slides in athletics. You can't wear slides in here, all right? So you wanna wear them in here, that's fine. Just make sure when you drop your bags off at the front uh, of the room, which will be a normal procedure, you go ahead and switch into your, norm, your, your athletic closed-toed shoes. Um, let's see. You're not gonna, you're gonna make sure that you don't use tools that are in any way defective or broken. Um, if it's a cutting tool, as I've said before, you need to make sure that it is sharp. Uh, you, you guys need to know where the fire extinguishers are in here. There's one right by the front door when you walk in, and there's one over by the material storage room on the opposite corner of the room. So the, the one, though, that everybody should be able to easily see is, is over here by the, by the front door when you walk in. Uh, this is a, a question that keeps coming up on these safety tests is about having your clothes, your, your sleeves, if you have shirt sleeves or if you've got jewelry, anything that's loose like that needs to be taken care of. If you've got sleeves, please, you know, uh, roll them up. If you've got jewelry, uh, like a lanyard with a name tag, tuck it away in your shirt or, or take it off, put it in your pocket, you know, while you're in here is fine. Um, you need to come in with your name tag on, with, with your ID on. But um, once it's time to get to work, make sure that is secured safely. Um, also about watches or bracelets, you know, I wear a watch. Um, sometimes I'll take it off um, to get it out of the way. Uh, it's okay if you're wearing a watch as long as it's not loose. Uh, same with bracelets, um, just not too loose. Uh, if it is, just take it off for the class period. Okay, if, if anybody does have an accident, you need to tell me right away. Um, I think students are mostly pretty good at that. Um, but there's been a few times where, you know, I didn't, something happened and I didn't find out about it until later. Um, so make sure that, you know, you, you come tell me about it or if you see an accident, let me know. Um, always, guys, permission. Permission, permission, permission. This is my shop. You're not free to just run around and grab stuff. Uh, you know, I want you to feel safe and comfortable in here. I want you to enjoy our time together and be creative. But you need to always ask permission before you go and grab uh, a tool or even your own uh, project. You don't come in and just grab that without permission. I might say, you know, it's time to you know, get your projects out or tomorrow when you come in, immediately get your projects out so we can get to work. But uh, I might have a different lesson planned for you that day as well. Um, let's see, big one, eye protection. Guys, you only get one set of eyes. Always wear your eye protection. Um, I always, always wear my eye protection. It's kind of like a seatbelt. You feel like you're maybe missing an important piece of clothing if you don't have your seatbelt on. I feel the same way about eye protection. I'll also say ear protection is not like required, um, but I have some earbuds if you want to use that. We have some over the ear ear protections like this that you can use, um, but I recommend everybody just go get you know a set of uh, ear protection from the hardware store. It's a good thing to have. Okay, let's talk a little bit about hand tools. You do want to make sure that a tool is sharp, um, but don't you know, use your finger to make sure that it's sharp because I don't want you to cut your finger. If you are carrying a tool and it does have a sharp edge, make sure that that is pointing towards the floor. Uh, same thing with the hammer or something like that. Um, I've seen you know, people get too comfortable, people get too crazy, and do some silly things with hand tools. Uh, don't be one of those people. Don't you know, throw a hand tool or see how many times you can flip a hammer or something like that. Um, guys, you know, I don't want the tool to get damaged, the room to get damaged, you or somebody else to get damaged. So we're not going to do any silly things with tools. Uh, if y'all want to you know, do flippy stuff, flippy spinny stuff, you can do that on your own time with your own tools, not with my tools. 
Only use the type of tools that are designed for the work you're doing. So don't try to make a tool do something that it's not designed for, or something you know that I haven't told you you can do that with this tool, right? Um, just and, and a tool. What is a tool really? You know, it's, it could be even a stick that we cut to the correct dimensions for something. Um, so, uh, for example, I've, I've cut some sticks that are, are going to be used for sanding. Uh, we could wrap some sandpaper around it to sand something very specific. Well, that was a piece of wood a minute ago, but when I cut it to those specific dimensions, now it's a tool. It might not look like a tool, but it is a tool. Um, only use it for what it's intended for. You know, if you say, "Oh, this is just looks like," you know, whatever, I'm just going to grab it and go do something that Mr. Broadway did not say I could do. You're going to probably make me grumpy with it. Uh, always, you know, plan your work. There's an old saying: "Plan your work and work your plan." But when you're also when you're planning your work, guys, I want you to think about your body. If you're making a cut. Um, I want you to plan that cut ahead. So for example, if you were cutting with a circular saw or a hand saw or something, position your body in such a way that you're going to maintain your balance. I want you to have you know, an athletic stance. Just be aware of where your body is, that you're not going to overreach um, and then lose your balance and fall on something. Okay? If, uh, you know, think about a piece of wood. If we're cutting a big piece of wood, what's going to happen as you start to cut through it? It's going to start to fall. Where is it going to fall? Just have a plan for that. Uh, let's see, check tools to make sure they're sharp, clean, and in good condition before you use them. You want to make sure that you, and this is an important one to me, and never lay tools down near the edge of the table. They could roll off, okay? Now, you've probably seen a tool like this before. This is a, a cordless drill, portable drill. And here's one of my favorite tools ever. This looks like a, a cordless drill. It's called an impact driver. This is used for driving screws, and you put a screwdriver bit on the end, and what this allows you to do is, is to you know, put in a screw into a piece of wood uh, or a metal screw into a piece of metal um, very, very easily, and it doesn't torque your wrist. So if you were gonna turn a screw like with this, um, it's gonna wanna twist your arm around like this, so you've gotta hold that thing really tight and steady. It takes a lot of effort. Um, this is a lot lighter and it has a mechanism in there which helps you put that screw in without this happening. If you're using a cordless drill, let's say it's got a screwdriver bit on the end that has a drill bit on the end like this. It's very tempting because there's that flat surface on the bottom of the battery to set it down like this. And you know, uh, I see a lot of people do this, um, grown, grown people do this. The problem is somebody can come along and tip it like this and then that falls like this, it hits the table, puts a hole in something or a nick in something, or it could, m m most often in here what I've seen is that it will break the, uh, the drill bit. So what I want you to do is set it down like this. Set your impact driver down like this, on the table, away from the edge. And that completely eliminates the problem of something falling over, because it's already fallen over, but it's fallen over in a safe way, right? So please make sure that you set down cordless drills and impact drivers like that. Uh, always use the right size tool for the job, and this applies to many, many different things. One example that comes to mind is your screwdriver bit. There's several different size screwdriver bits, if you didn't know that. Not just shapes, but sizes. Uh, if you're trying to use a number three Phillips head to turn a number one screw, it will not work. Materials should be fastened down so that both your hands are left free to use the tools. If you can use a clamp or a vise or a partner, um, you need to do that. Right? You need to secure your workpiece so that you can put both hands on the tool. It's always going to be safer for that. Mm -hmm. Alright, and don't use a tool that's broken or defective. If you think the tool is broken, defective, uh, don't use it. Now when it comes to power tools, the same thing is true. Of course, don't use a broken or defective tool, but something else you need to look out for is if the tool has a power cord, Make sure that the power cord is not damaged or frayed in any way, which could be uh, could have been could have been something that happened recently. Maybe I'm not aware of it. Take a look and say, "Hey, uh, I think this might be broken, Mr. Broadway. What do you think?" And um, and that will be you know really good to catch a problem like that before it creates an injury. Um, so we've talked about you know long hair being tied back as well when you're using power tools um, on the drill press. It might not be as much of an issue because you're standing upright, but if you're using a cordless drill, 
maybe you're working closer to you, right? Closer to your body like this. If I had long hair, I need to make sure that it's not anywhere near that drill bit, okay? <clears throat> Be sure the switch is in the off position before you plug in a power tool. Don't accidentally plug in the drill press, for example, when uh, it's on. Uh, just make sure that you double check that uh, you know something is, is off before you plug it in. And uh, we only want to have those power tools plugged in when it's time to use them. So especially with the miter saws, I like to be pretty diligent about unplugging those when we're done. <clears throat> uh, as I said earlier, you need to ask permission before you use uh, any tools in here. Uh, you also need to make sure that I'm in the room. Okay, if for some reason uh, there's an emergency or something, I have to leave the room. Um, that would mean that all power tool usage will stop. Um, this also is true, guys, if I have a planned absence, if I, uh, you know, have a substitute. We're not working with power tools on that day. Okay, so sometimes, guys, all, you know, all power tools have a motor. And sometimes when we use that motor, we put the motor under uh, strain, stress, resistance. You can overload a motor by putting more resistance into the motor than it's designed for. So make sure that you don't do that. If you start to hear the motor make a different sound, or if it's smoking, uh, you know, or if you smell something funny, um, that can be a sign that you're overloading the motor. So stop what you're doing and ask for some help. Well guys, that about covers it all. Um, these, these three tests are fairly easy. Um, I do want you to go through them all and uh, we'll get a good grade in the gradebook for you. Um, thanks for taking the safety very seriously. Always wearing your safety glasses and giving people plenty of room when they are using a tool. Always asking permission. These are just important protocols that we need to always observe in here, okay? Looking forward to having you in the shop so that we can start building some awesome stuff. See you soon.